suppose most people back home are very familiar obviously Irish water and the issue around water charges uh, is huge at the moment but what they might not be aware of is the growing concern across the European Union towards around privatisation and um, around accessibility around people not being able to afford water where charges are in place so I'm actually heading up a report looking at that and looking at calling on the Commission to enshrine water as a human right. So what I wanted to do was to certainly to, I suppose, bring the Irish right to water campaigners, the, the trade unions, the political activists within Sinn Féin over to meet their European counterparts so that we can have a joined up approach as to how we can, uh, I suppose, force the hand of the Commission in enshrining water as a human right. Well, what, what have we got today, deadline number 74 for people to register? I think, you know, there or thereabouts, half the population still haven't registered. Many of those who have registered haven't really registered Alan Kelly. They've just sent back their envelopes. And some of those who have actually registered have decided to, to change their mind. They're not going to pay. The reality is, um, first of all, on the water issue, the reality is Irish water and this concept has been rejected by the Irish people. And that will, be, that will manifest itself whenever Alan Kelly, the Labour Party and Fine Gael have the courage to do what we said in the centre December they should do and go to the country. I think it was demonstrated on Saturday the power in the communities is still there and right to water weren't hands on on that demonstration, those demonstrations. We supported them, we gave a little bit of logistical assistance instead of in, in terms of printing that kind of thing, but that was the communities. It's now time for the politicians, for the independents, for the trade unions, for the communities, for that alliance which has been so, so powerful to come together again, not just for the next event, but for the next four, five, six, seven events and to make sure that we get the right result in the next general election because that's what's going to get Irish water in the dustbin. Well, I think what's very interesting about today's, uh, about today's exchanges, particularly exchanges from Germany and from the German delegates was the fact that when water was privatised, water services privatised in cities like Berlin, that the charges shot up uh, and multiplied. But I think what was also interesting was, was that the investment in water went down. And that's very, very similar to what happened with telecom services in Ireland when telecom, uh, which is now Aircom, was privatised. The, the level of investment in it went down. That's why we have poor broadband, but the charges went up. And that's it's a very, very similar situation. So I think there's a lesson there for us in Ireland. I think the fact that the meters are being fitted at a very, very quick rate shows where this is going. The fact that the government failed to put in and refused to hold a referendum uh, on public ownership of water, as I proposed in the bill that I brought to the Dáil, shows that you know we could have privatisation down the line. But what the, what we have learned today is is that with privatisation comes high charges, but lack of investment and poor infrastructure. So, this is uh, what uh, Mr. Katainen now contends. is a form of neocolonialism where you have theoretically some rights enshrined in the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the Union, but you cannot evoke them vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the Troika. We think that society and the needs of society should prevail at all times and not uh, private profit. Thank you so much and I hope that uh, our uh, common uh, cause will uh, proceed uh, further <laughs> with uh, further election results <laughs> in other countries uh, of the Union as well. Thank you.